Can you see it? Yeah, so, so we're here at the Open Server Summit. So who are you? Uh, Anil Vasudeva, with the uh, president of IMAX Research, which is an um, industry analyst company. We do both uh, research and consulting for the IT industry. Uh, specifically now, we're very focused on uh, software-defined um, data centers, software-defined storage, and software-defined networks. Because that is coming on very strong in the last two years, and it'll catch on fire. It's, it, it may be an inflection point for this IT industry. And the reason is because it really brings the uh, operating cost down. And, and that's what all the data centers are looking for. So it's kind of like a required uh, uh, way of doing things to uh, make things work when there's so much more demand for stuff and the uh, power, there's a limit, right? Right. I mean, let, let me give you a metaphor. A metaphor would be a body is a hardware. And then depending upon your function that you're trying to go, if you go in the evening, you put up a dress, you are going in the morning and doing some casual, you put up jeans and you go to office and you could put a jacket. So those in effect is the, to the, at the end of the day, since hardware is not that we are putting the money in, you are creating different personality for different uh, functions. So some of the functions are you know, enterprise functions, which are very heavy duty and uh, require the robustness as well as require, uh, shall we say, you know, unforgiving, uh, it cannot break down and all that. Whereas on the other hand, you have videos and movies and all that. Those are not as needed to be robust and also need very extremely high bandwidth or you know high speed of data transmission. So those are two different markets. So that means if we can use the same computers, but let the software make the personalities for very high bandwidth oriented videos, also, the same software now switch over all these components, join them together to do the enterprise heavy-duty work. So now we have reduced the cost with the same computers. So that's the essence of uh, software-defined uh, future of data centers. And you were talking about pooling of uh, CPU memory, different places. What is that? Right. So the pooling, pooling means is uh, look at it this way. Uh, I'm also going to start with the metaphor. So supposing you have these jelly beans, the yellow color and the blue color and this. And so if you want a certain application uh, running and you need four of blue, blue, uh, blue um, jelly beans and two of these and four of these, this is the equivalent metaphor of the kind of CPU you need and the kind of memory you need and the kind of storage so, and, and the network. So because every computer runs on these fundamentals. One is the, the CPUs, the other one is the memory, and the third one is I.O., which is either network or disk drives and all that. So now if you, if you have a certain application, it needs four of CPUs, 100 of memories, and needs of only two of I.O.s. So you put them together and run the application and then give it back to the pool. So the pool is a whole bunch of I.O.s, whole bunch of memories and whole bunch of CPUs sitting there as pooled CPUs and pooled memory and pooled I.O. So you grab some of those depending upon what the application is needing. And you run the application and give it back to the pool. And that is the mo and so the pool can be the most cost effective. Why? Because it's the same modules. It's the same jelly beans of one color. Another jelly beans of another color and jelly beans of third. So when you want to build something, you pick up two of these, four of these, depending upon what your needs are. So the software defined and the pooling and these things sounds like new way of doing things. Is uh, that an opportunity for ARM to come in and, and kind of like customize stuff? Okay, uh, ARM is one another incarnation of this whole. Uh, so CPU, it, basically what it boils down to is that if you have a, a very general purpose, low cost, not, not so much, low power, so you gang them whole bunch of these um, CPUs together to create these functions as compared to having very individualized, uh, very individualized, very function-oriented CPUs that Intel made in the past. So when, since the power is, is a very key function of assembling a whole bunch of, so think of this way, if you can pool a whole bunch of ARM processors 
and uh, so you can carve them to make A application to be run or a B application or a C application. So that's why the success of it. So you think it's going to succeed? What oh, do you think? Arm um, would have a very strong place in a whole bunch of early on, not so much into the enterprise, very high uh, demands, but more so where, let's say, for example, uh, if you look at Facebook and all that, they have uh, thousands and thousands of uh, servers. So, and they are all very dedicated to serving your, uh, uh, your information coming in from the web. So they fit in beautifully there. And so the companies like Facebook and the like, eBay's and all that would be doing all these uh, at the expense of some very dedicated high enterprise level uh, computers that Intel makes. So a lot of change, a lot of things are happening in this industry. Well, the biggest change is not so much the ARM versus uh, Intel. The biggest change is software. So these are the elements that you assemble together and if you can do them on the fly, on the fly, then you are uh, serving those functions, then you give it back to the pool, the next function comes, you give it and serve that function, give it back to the pool. So it's a very new, different ways of doing it. And it all started with something called virtualization. That was the first concept coming out of Stanford. And is it Stanford again doing the software-defined networking stuff? They're, they're, they're Bunch of guys over there? They're, they're, they're hands on many, you know, I mean, if you, go, if you go to Stanford and look at these evening meetups and all that, oh, you, you'll be seeing a whole bunch of things coming in from there, continuously. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a breeding ground for, uh, you know, the next generation of innovators, if you will.